Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I know I don't normally do a video on a Monday, but the fact that I didn't, I didn't really film much yesterday. And I didn't do a full Sunday chat, and Sunday, uh, Saturday, I was out all day. I thought I'll just do a. I'm going to do a video in the style of Insa. Just point the camera and look at plants as I go round, um, and forget some of the names. Um, I'm good at that. <laughs> but before we start, I did mention yesterday that Hannah and I did some work in the garden. I'll just sort of point. I'm not going out there. The shed has lots of bare wood where the colour has gone complete, completely gone. So if you look at the side of, well, the front of the shed, basically where the door is, you can see all that bare wood down the bottom. Hang on, let me... Let me talk about it. Let's go and look at it. So that needed a coat before the rest of the shed was painted. Yeah, so that it got an initial, like a primer, so to speak. So we did the front of the shed. We screwed the piece of wood on. That's the piece of wood that holds the fence post to the shed. That sort of job went okay. Um, and then I painted the bare wood on the side of the shed and the panel. Um, I was supposed to go out and do some more this morning, but quite honestly, it's just too hot. There will be other days when it's not raining and the weather's nice and it's not 28 degrees. It only went down to 23 last night. That was the low point at dawn this morning. I actually slept in my chair down in the lounge last night. I was nowhere I was going upstairs where all the heat is. And there's no point in opening the windows, all it does is let more heat in, it doesn't let much out. And the house is cooler than outside, so I'd like to keep it that way, so the windows stay shut. Um, Hannah had a bit of a prune round the garden, trimmed a few things, tidied up that... Oh look! Oh, I've, I've got to go out, I think that's a painted lady. In which case that's the first one this year. I'll see if I can get it. It landed, by the, it landed on the shed, I believe. What if it did? Oh no, it's a Jersey Tiger. So it's not a butterfly, it's a moth. Oh, it's gone. Let's see if I can find it in the bush, because they, they do fly occasionally in the daytime, but they're normally a night flyer, being a moth. Now I can see it. Whether the hell I can zoom in on it, I don't know. I will try. Right, you should be able to see it there. Their top wings are black and white. Uh, where are we? There. So that's it. But when it opens its wings, they're brilliant orange with black spots on. Um, oh, I've lost it. There it is. That's the first, do you believe it or not, that is the first one I have ever seen. I'm going to zoom out because I'm going to put my hand in there and see if it will move and I can capture the colour as it moves. That's the first one I've ever seen. I know about these things but don't necessarily... There it goes. Do you see the colour? They are stunning. So that's a Jersey Tiger moth was. <laughs> anyway, so all of this bare wood has got to be coated up. God, I'm getting a hole. I'm going to have to go in again. This is too much for us uh, wussy English people. But um, yeah, I got a coat on the bare wood there and the panel's all been screwed on. So that fence post is now firmly fixed, fixed to the shed so it can blow a gale as much as it likes and uh, It'll stay there. That's the old piece of wood which I'm using to stop any spots getting on the decking. So I'm sort of using my kneeler, because obviously I'm down low, and putting that down on the decking so we don't get spots on it. So that's the idea. And as I said, Hannah did some pruning in various places. She had to tidy up round here, did some things um, while I was painting, basically. <laughs> Right, back in here where, believe it or not, it's actually cooler. It's cooler in here than it is outside. And, and it is with the fan off, which obviously I've turned off the film. It's a mere 28 in here and it's cool. Walking back in here from outside, 
it feels cool and refreshing at 28 degrees. It's absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, just a sort of quick looking round. I'm not going to be able to name every single plant as I go past it, but um, the unnamed hybrid could be Formidabla, um, which is a cross between Infundibulum and Formosum, I believe. And it, this unnamed hybrid that I've got may well be that. Somebody reminded me of that plant. I had a look and um, it's pretty close, so it could be. Anyway, that was repotted. Two new growths pushing on. Herco Glossum's still not growing. Um, Kiki's are okay, but the base, the plant has not put up one new growth, even though the growths that are on there are still growing. They've still got new leaves coming. Um, that's one of the prosthetias there. That's doing fine. A couple of new growths coming. My apple blossom's not doing very well at all, but at least it's trying. So it does have a new growth and some roots. But look, it's come out halfway up the plant. So it's not quite right. This encyclia that I was about to throw away does have a new growth and it's pushing on. Um, the Victoria Regina, still no growth from the base. Blooms are fading. That's one of the Catatanti divisions. And this is a Brassia division as well. That will be Vericosa because the other one, the other division I gave to Helen at the garden party, and that's the one that had the label in it, <laughs> split it in two. Uh, that's another Catatanti there, that's the big piece. Um, Infundibulum, currently in bloom, and the new growth on that is pushing on nicely and it's doing some nice roots now. So that, that's fine. Um, what else we got up the back there? That's my Catlia, the red one. Um, currently covered in scale. They just, they go for Cattleyas. No wonder Lynn says Cattleyas are not allowed in her row space, ever. Not even if she was looking after them, they'd stay in the garden. She won't have them in the place. So they just, from nowhere, scale appear. Now, my Epidendrum that's been recently repotted, um, several people have said these are not water lovers. Um, I mean, somebody even said you're better off treating it like a cactus and only giving it water when it's absolutely necessary. Somebody also said, why don't you put it out in the garden? That's where they like to be. And don't water it, just let it get rained on and then go dry in between. So there's various ideas of how to get that going again. And one person, one idea was to not leave it in the grow room. It's too humid and the chances are the media would stay too wet because I'll keep watering it. We shall see. I'm not putting it outside in this heat. Um, that's my antelope type dendrobium, the smaller one. A couple of new growths coming on. My vanda's not doing very well. It never will because I can't look after it properly. It needs to be in a place where those roots get hydrated and that's not it. So it's never going to do that well like that. This is my um, oh, the funny named Oncidium type, Mexicoa. Not doing well at all, I don't think it ever will, it just doesn't seem to want to grow. Uh, Renanthera, um, growing, um, and some roots are in the media, so some of the roots do get hydrated. Um, up the back there, that's another Brassia. Couple of plants in a pot, new growth pushing on. Lelia anseps up in the corner there with the spike coming. Um, Dendrobium lindleyi, um, it's actually produced a couple of new growths recently, so it's not dead. <laughs> Quite honestly, I knew it wasn't dead because the leaves haven't desiccated and dropped off. But it's just not growing. It's another Dendrobium just not growing. However, this one is. This is the other antelope type. And um, it's got two bits to it, effectively. This bit here keeps trying to put up new growths not very successfully but the other piece the good piece has put up a lovely strong new growth and if there's enough light here that might actually bloom one day it's got to have the light though um, in tucked in here is the miltonia sort of thing with a couple of exceptions um, none of these are doing exceptionally well effectively um, this is i go 
Luisendorf and the latest growth and bulb on that is absolutely huge and a nice root system came out of it. It's liable to try and bloom on the next growth so we shall see. But this is the only Miltonia group of plants because there's about five plants in there that's actually doing okay. The others are just not doing very well. Um, this one organized by INSA um, the new growths are actually producing some roots now, so it should pick up. <clears throat> My Paphiopedalums are doing reasonably well, considering they never did well at the other place. They're sort of doing okay. Blackjack's got a bud. Um, one of my manky looking um, Phalaenopsis that's got a spike on it, I only just noticed that. Uh, Restrepias down there, they don't like this heat. However, two of them are trying to bloom, not very successfully, but they're, they're giving it a go. And um, the problem is that the blooms, if it manages to open the bloom, they last about two days and they're gone. They just shrivel. It's too hot. They're cool growers. Cool growers with high humidity. Uh, well, I've got the humidity and I've got the heat to go with it, unfortunately. And then up here is a right assortment. Along the back there are nobly type dendrobiums. They're all in a bright light position. Um, most of them are pushing out kikis, much to my annoyance, but that's what they're doing. I don't know a way to stop it, so tough. <laughs> Shari baby spikes pushing on. Um, Spidery nonsense stuff here. That's the Shelob Marie. Uh, this one I got at Burnham's. There's several um, Latoria type dendrobiums tucked in here. You can sort of see the that you know that looks like it's going to bloom. If it does, it'll be the first time ever. That's the Aussie sweetness cross with Tapinensi. Um, it's never bloomed. It's it's grown some nice new growths, but it's never bloomed. But it looks like it might do this time. We shall see. Uh, what else we got? It's another prosthetia here. That's radiata. That's got two spikes coming. We'll see those soon. A couple of oncidium types up there. There's a twinkle that I bought off Helen. Uh, well, at the auction. Um, so I didn't know it was from Helen at the time. Another prosthetia here. Um, hibiki. Um, blooms are showing colour now. We should see those open soon. Other blooms here. My pinguiculas. Those are Derek's plants. We've had a look at those recently. They're pulling on slowly but surely. You know, I think they're in their third year and that's all I've got. They're not exactly rushing to be um, good plants, are they? Then over here, this top shelf, these two on the end are not... Well, they, I've changed my mind actually. There used to be two plants here, I've moved one. Um, so that plant up the back there is not an Oncidium and from here I don't know what it is. That's not Oncidium, Cilogeny. We're on the Cilogeny shelf now. So all the rest of this shelf are Cilogeny, so the collection has grown quite a bit. And Natida is not doing very well but it has got a large new growth that hasn't opened its leaves yet. It's just desiccated, the bulbs don't look good. In behind it, the Cristata is doing fine. That's a young plant, but it's got two new growths. And most of the others are doing okay. You know, they've got nice leaves, um, they've got plump bulbs, they've got new growths coming. Most of them are doing fine, I'm quite pleased, because I've tried those before and failed miserably. And then down here are the Odonto Glossums, with a couple of exceptions. That's a Zygo, be opening bloom soon. And Phalaenopsis tucked in there somewhere. <laughs> I've got to just find spaces on shelves. Um, yeah, so that's the Odonts. Um, I won't say they're doing brilliantly, because they're not. But at least they're growing. You know, at least they've got new growths. Um, there's one at the back with a spike as well. Uh, down there, that's another um, prosthetia type and the Dendrobium Hancockii. I, I, I think I've managed to get rid of the mealybugs on that, but I'm probably deceiving myself. I've only got to turn me back and they'll, there they'll be again. Then up here are mostly the rescues, and as you can see, this shelf is getting quite thin on the ground now. That Oncidium is not a rescue, and nor is the Phalaenopsis. Well, if you take those two away, What's left is not very good, is it? <laughs> but 
you know, you do what you can. Um, the little Oncidium there, that one's that one's pulling up, that's doing okay. The um, Coneco is growing, but no new growths at the base again. Yet another Dendrobium with no new growths at the base. It just seems to be the way. And then my Mazda Valias and the one Dracuvalia. Oh, that was interesting. The Dracuvalia bloom lasted a long time and it dropped off and it looks like it's sequential. It looks like it's not got another bud coming, but it does have another spike as well and a couple of new growths. So not doing brilliantly, but it's, you know, at least it's, it's growing and it's producing blooms. There's a couple of Mazda Valias in here. This one doesn't look like it's going to make it. This one's borderline. This one's probably going to pick up. We shall see. And there's a couple of reasonable ones in, a, whoops, in amongst there. You trip over something, why don't you? So yeah, that's just a quick look round. Um, oh, what else? Uh, there's a kiki here somewhere. Where did I hide it? Uh, oh, there it is down there. Um, that's another, another kiki from Lynn, which I will mount. I'll do that probably tomorrow. And that's Dendrobium nobili, and um, I've seen this written many different ways. <laughs> um, Cooksonium, Cooksonii, I've seen it with a capital C in quotes, I've seen it as a variety, I've seen it with F full stop in front of it. So it seems to be written in many different ways, but effectively, it's a, in my book, it is a variety of the nobili species. And it's the one with the brighter colours and the fragrance. So it's also not that easy to get to bloom. But I've got a kiki anyway, so we'll get that, we'll get that mounted tomorrow. And um, yes, I mean, tomorrow is a massive watering day, which I shall have to do early in the day. Because it gets too warm in here otherwise. I mean, it's like now, it's, the heat's starting to build up. And without the fan on, you know, it's not doing the plants much good. So, uh, oh, and my mounts over here. We always forget these. The Jenkins CI has pushed some new growth out, so that's doing okay. That's a phylum. Um, those were the kikis that came off the main plant. Some of them are doing okay. That is the main plant down there, what's left of it, because the, the, the real mother plant just rotted away and left a couple of kikis, which then got planted. Um, it's my air plants up there, all mounted on the same bit of cork bark and then this one is the one with the strange name this is growing well this is uh, if the sun hasn't bleached the yes it has <laughs> the sun's bleached the label <laughs> yeah. but this one's growing well and it has it's produced produced two new growths at the base of this kiki so this piece is growing well this has got a new growth over here, part way up the cane, and I've just noticed this one's got one too. These three kikis have filled this moss with roots. They're doing really well. This is a recently mounted kiki, which um, hopefully the label's still got some letters on we can read. Uh, Brimerianum, that one is. I don't really know anything about that, but there's no, more kikis from Lynn. And um, yeah, so. I'm thinking of starting to do a few more mounts. I'm not going to go mad because it's, mo it's most of the dendrobiums were lost because they were mounted when I came round here. But I think I've worked out why. Moving environments, total change of environments, two bad growing seasons and the moss went off on the mounts. So a lot of them got taken off and potted and it was too much for them. They were already in too, too much of a weakened state. So that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> anyway, uh, just a quick look round, um, and it is a quick look round as well. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, Hannah was well impressed with the Disa display. <laughs> she didn't realize quite how many I'd managed to get. And you have to bear in mind, quite a few of these were gifts. They were added in to the ones that I, were, that I purchased. But um, I've been in touch with the DESA guy with another couple of questions. Um, he'd already said the large pots need to be split into, be f into four. And I, I had a question. I thought, well, if I'm going to split them into four, do they, those four pieces go in smaller pots? And the answer was no. 
put the pieces in the same size pot. They will rapidly expand and fill the pot. So don't worry about the space in the pot. They get they fill it up quite quickly. So that was that question. And the other question was what do I do with the small pots? Do I just pot them on in the same size pot? Do I split them? And he said, quite honestly, the smaller pots are going to grow a lot next year. If all is well, they will push on a lot of growth next year. And he said, the best thing you can do with those is put those in one litre pots as well. So it looks like when I do all the repotting, we're going to end up with everything in the larger size pots. Um, which means they're not going to fit in those two trays. But I've got more trays, that's not a problem. Three trays will fit on those two tables, just twist them round, three, yeah? So, and that will probably accommodate them. And you have to bear in mind, once the blooms are gone, these don't have to have height above the plants, they can go on a shelf somewhere, yeah? So they don't need the height, they only need it now while the blooms are there. So they can go in a different place, they don't necessarily have to go on, on that table. We might be doing some rearranging for the winter. What we might be doing is moving those so that the tables can go. And then that tall shelf is going to go there. So that will butt up against the door. I'll still be able to get in there to get at plants. Bearing in mind the shelves slide on their little trays. They're easily moved. The idea being that I rearrange this side so that I can see the bird feeder. Because the way I've rearranged it now, I won't be able to see the birds in the winter. Um, chatted to Hannah and she said, how much was your bird feeder? I said, oh, I think it's about 20 quid. She said, well, why don't you dump that one and get a new one then? Because that one's falling apart. So that's probably what will happen. We'll get a new one. But for me to be able to sit at my table and watch the birds in the winter when they're feeding, something's got to give here because this is just a block of plants. So... And that lot have still got to come indoors. That's no mean feat, trying to find somewhere for that lot. We must have a closer look at them again soon. Maybe I could do that later this week. So, uh, what do you think? <laughs> anyway, so that's it for today. That's not a substitute for the Sunday chat. It's just a, it's just a look round, really. I just watched Inch's video and thought, well... Having run out of ideas, I'll do the same sort of thing and just point the camera at most of the plants <laughs> and try and remember what the hell they're called. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, what should we end on? I'm, I'm, I'm going to milk these deezers until the blooms fall. So you're going to have to have an end on another deezer. And hopefully you can see why. In fact, let's end on a couple just to show the variety of colours. You don't get much variety in shape, but then you get ones like this, multi-floral, with a massive hood. Yeah. And you get lovely deep cerise pink. So there's a, quite a variety. So, I'm gonna go back indoors, shut this door, into the coolest place in the house, which is the lounge at the moment. And um, I'm still waiting for the boiler man to come. He's supposed to be coming this afternoon to sort out why the boiler's not firing. And um, yeah, uh, I, I can, I mean, I've just done the weekend's washing up by boiling a couple of kettles, which is probably a lot cheaper than trying to heat the tank of water up, quite honestly. So maybe we don't need the boiler for a while, but we're gonna need it, you know, come late autumn, so we need it sorted. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.